Today I'm going to show you how you can create your own cloud gaming server using Amazon Web Services and Parsec. A cloud gaming server lets you play AAA games at high settings on any device you have, whether it's your thin and light gaming laptop, your tablet, your phone, maybe even your computer at work. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Keith, why would you want to create your own gaming server when there's services like Google Stadia, GeForce Now, Shadow, Amazon Luna and such? Well, those services are great if you live close to one of their servers. You see, I live here on this tiny little island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea called Malta. Now, it's great if you want to get to the beach in five minutes, but it's not so great for cloud gaming. You see, the further you are from your gaming server, the more latency you're going to have. And most game streaming services will reduce quality to reduce latency, leaving you with a blurry game with a lot of stuttering. More often than not, these game streaming services are simply not available. If I try to sign up for a Google Stadia account, it just says, nope, we're not available in your country. It's not just availability though. Creating your own server has other benefits mainly the ability to play any game you want. Uh, Google Stadia, for example, only lets you play the games they support. And you have to buy them again, even if you already own them. That's something I ain't gonna do. GeForce Now lets you play games from your existing Steam or other game store library. Uh, but there's been quite a lot of controversy back in 2020, as developers have been pulling their games from GeForce Now since Nvidia didn't exactly ask for permission before making those games available on the service. Creating your own cloud gaming server is basically like owning a powerful PC. You decide what games or other software you want to run, whether it's a new AAA title like Cyberpunk 2077 or one of my personal favorites, a 1993 game of Doom or some other 3D or video editing software, anything that your local computer can't handle. Dude, that sounds great. Why isn't everyone doing this? Well, for one, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, you'll need to be familiar with using the command line uh, and be able to solve problems when things go wrong. Um, I'm gonna guide you through it in the video, but you know, you should know at least a little bit what you're doing. Also, it's not cheap. Uh, if you're an avid gamer who spends about 40 hours a month gaming, uh, your monthly bill could easily be $60 or more. Although in reality, I typically only spend around $20 a month. Uh, also, some games don't work on Windows Server, which is what we're going to be using, uh, whether because it's the latest version of DirectX is missing or some other missing software like Xbox Game Pass and stuff like that. So it really depends on your games, so your mileage may vary. I haven't had many problems though. Okay, so enough talk. What are we actually going to build? Well, it depends what you want out of the video. Uh, if you're just interested in gaming on the cloud, uh, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a gaming server on AWS, that's Amazon Web Services, installing your game and playing. Uh, if you're a bit more technical and also want to save some moolah, I'm also going to be showing you how to add automation uh, to your server. So when you're not gaming, the server will automatically snapshot your volume until the next time, saving you quite a lot in service charges. So with that, let's get started. Uh, so you'll need to get an AWS account. You can go to aws.amazon.com uh, click get started for free and create an account. Uh, and you also need a Parsec account, so go to parsec.app again to create your free account. Now, let's get technical. Okay, so here we are at the Amazon console. And the first thing we're going to do is go to EC2. So we'll go to services, EC2 up here. And as you can see right now, I have nothing running uh, so the first thing we want to do is create our instance. This is our virtual machine and we want to make sure we're in a region that's close to us. In my case, that's Frankfurt, but you, you should choose the region closest to you. So after clicking launch instances, we need to find a Windows Server 2019 base instance. I'm going to go ahead and uh, search for it here. 
Windows Server 2019. And there you go. The first one in the list there is the one that you're going to need. You can also use Server 2016, but at this point, that's showing its age. Now we need to choose an instance type. Uh, any instance type starting with a G for graphics should work fine. Uh, I'm going to use a G4DN.xLarge, which is a moderately powerful machine. Um, I can run Doom Eternal on Nightmare settings on that, so it's fine for me. We'll click Next. Uh, now, you don't actually need to change any settings here, uh, but of course, if you know what you're doing, you can. And uh, so we'll go ahead and click Add Storage. And here you have to choose the size of your disk. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, 512 gig. Uh, you might want to use a different size. Okay, so that's up to you. Um, uh, however, the larger the size, the longer it will take to create a snapshot. Uh, we'll choose GP2 for the volume type. And you'll want to make sure you switch off delete on termination. We want the volume to stay there when the instance is terminated. Uh, now we'll click next to add tags. And I'm going to add a tag here just to give the instance a name. So the key needs to be name with a capital N. And the value will be the name for your gaming rig, which I'm going to call Guru Gaming Rig. Make sure that the name is applied to both the instances and the volumes. Okay, now it will be applied to the network interfaces too, but we don't really need that. We'll click Next. Uh, this will configure a security group, which is basically a firewall for our machine. I'm going to give it a name. And this will basically just allow RDP access from any IP address at this point. Uh, so I called it Guru Gaming Rig SG and then a little description. Now we can click Review and Launch to actually launch our instance. Next, we'll click Launch. And here we have to create a key pair, which will let us log in to our server. I'll click Create a new key pair and give the key pair a name. Guru Gaming Rig Key. Uh, we'll download this key pair. And we can click Launch Instances. Now we're going to be creating quite a few files during this process, so I suggest you create a folder somewhere on your system where you're going to store all the files related to the gaming rig, which is exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm going to get the key I downloaded and place it in that folder. Okay, so now if we click View Instances, you'll see that there it is, our gaming rig. Uh, and as you can see here, um, I have all the settings shown and uh, the status check column is initializing. Okay, so our gear gaming rig is currently logging in. Next, we need to connect to it. So we click connect and switch to the RDP client tab and we click download remote desktop file. So this is a file that is used by Microsoft remote desktop to allow us to connect to the machine. Now we'll also need the password for this, uh, for this connection to work. So we'll click get password. Now, since I just launched the instance, the password isn't available yet. So wait a few minutes until the password is available. I'm going to go ahead and try this again. And here it is. So now to get the password, it needs to be decrypted. So we'll need to click on the browse button there and uh, specify the location of the key we downloaded earlier. So we'll click browse. I'll go to my gaming rig folder and select the key. And as you can see, the keys there, we click decrypt password and there it is. We can then copy the password uh, using that icon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually save the password in a text file, which is a horribly bad idea, by the way, uh, and save it to that folder. Later, you'll want to migrate that password to some sort of password manager. Okay, but for now, this will do. Okay. So we have everything we need to connect to our instance. So we'll double click on the RDP file. Uh, we'll accept the certificate warning. And when prompted, we'll paste the password and click continue. And we're connected to our rig. Okay, our server is running. Uh, however, we can't game on it yet. Uh, there's some stuff we need to install, such as a proper web browser and drivers for our NVIDIA graphics card. Luckily, the folks over at Parsec have a super handy cloud preparation tool that does just that. 
Okay, so we'll start by going to the link to the Parsec GitHub page. Um, let's see. Here we go. And if you scroll down here, you will see a Windows PowerShell script that you can just copy directly from the page. Okay, we'll go back to our gaming rig and from the start menu, we will search for uh, PowerShell. And then we'll click on Windows PowerShell. Now, when you paste uh, your content in here, you can just right click into the window. And as you can see, the content is automatically pasted and the first command will run. Uh, then press enter to actually start the script. Okay, so we're in the script now and uh, this will start downloading some stuff. So the first question is, do we want this computer to log into Windows automatically, which we do. So we'll type yes. And here we need to enter our username and password. So the username is administrator and the password is the password which we downloaded earlier when connecting to Amazon. So I'm going to just uh, find my password from this file and copy it. And I'll paste it in here and click OK. Now, you may start getting warnings. Uh, this is due to some missing files that the scripts expect to be there, but that Amazon or Microsoft have removed. Don't worry about that for now. We're going to see what wasn't downloaded by the script and will download and install them manually. If you do this, you might actually not encounter any errors because this would have been fixed, in which case all the better, you can skip a few steps. As you can see, DirectX June 2010 redistributable was not downloaded here, but uh, we'll download that guy manually. There's also some driver for uh, Xbox controllers, which will download. In the meantime, I'm logging into Parsec and since this is a new IP, I'll need to verify that this is actually me logging in. So I'll go to my email client and I'll click approve your new location. Okay, so now I should be able to go back to Parsec, click login, and here we are. Welcome to Parsec. Lovely. In the meantime, the script has carried on installing stuff. Uh, just in case it freezes, just press enter and it will continue. At this point, you can see it's installing the Razer Surround installer, which is required for audio. Now, you will be asked to log in. You don't actually need to do this, but since I have an account, I'm logging in anyway. And from these settings here, I'm going to enable Razer Surround. Again, you don't need to do this. I just do this because, um, well, why not, right? Uh, there are also some other settings you can play around with in Razer Surround. You need to give the script an access key so it can download the NVIDIA driver. So simply copy the link from the script and paste it into your browser. Okay, so from here we'll go to access keys and we'll click create a new access key. Uh, I'm showing it here. Uh, and what you'll definitely want to do is download this key since you cannot get it back later. So uh, click download key file. And again, I would recommend you place that in your folder, which is what I'm doing right here. So now copy the access key ID and paste it in the script. Pressing enter. And then again, copy the secret key and also paste it in the script, pressing enter. Now, do we want to save this key? If you're the only one using the server, go ahead and hit yes. And at this point, uh, as you can see, the script has detected that uh, a driver is required and it will be downloaded from the AWS support site. Uh, it tells us that we might need to reboot. That's fine. Yes. And do we want to update? Yes. And here it downloads and installs the driver. Now this could take a while. I've sped it up here, um, uh, but yeah, it will install. Okay, so it says no reboot is required. So do I want to reboot? No. In case you have problems, you might want to do that. Normally at this point, we'd be done. But since we had errors in our script, we need to manually download and install the files that the script couldn't install. Uh, we'll start with DirectX and then we'll move on to the uh, Xbox 360 controller, etc. So uh, you'll find a download link in the description uh, to download the DirectX redistributable. 
Uh, now, the reason I'm not providing the official Microsoft download link is because <laughs> it doesn't work anymore. But this website, which I found, uh, seems to have the driver and I've checked it with a virus scanner. It seems to be fine. Uh, so we'll just click download and then we'll click agree and download and yet again, click download. Right, so after a few seconds, the download will begin and um, yep, that download is ready. So we'll go ahead and open it and it's a simple uh, next, next finish kind of install. We'll, now we'll choose where to extract the files. You can put this anywhere really. Uh, I'm just going to place it on my desktop and tell it to create a folder, uh, which I'm calling dxtemp. Uh, when I click OK, it says create the folder. Yes, we want to do that. And the files will be extracted there. OK, so now I'm going to go to the folder on my desktop and scroll down until you find dxsetup.exe, which is right here. So we'll uh, run this setup, read <coughs> the license agreement, accept it, and click next a few times to get it installed. Um, okay, so DirectX has been installed. And now I don't do it in the video, but you can then remove the folder from your desktop. Now, the next thing we need to install is the Xbox controller driver. Um, link is in the description. Now you may be wondering why I'm not giving you Microsoft download links for these two. Well, here's why. The files don't exist anymore. Microsoft has removed them for whatever reason. So this is why I'm giving you separate links for DirectX and for uh, this Xbox driver. So again, you'll find this link in the description. Uh, click on download now. And after a few seconds, the download should automatically begin. And yeah, there it is. So we'll open this guy. Uh, read <clears throat> and accept the agreement, next, and it should only take a few seconds to install. All right, so the installation is complete. Lovely. The Parsec utility includes two scripts which can automatically shut down your machine or give you a warning when it's been on for an hour. These are really useful. So I'm going to set up the one hour warning. Okay, so after I've been playing for an hour, I know I'm going to be billed for another hour. And I'm also going to set up auto shutdown. Now you can choose uh, the number of minutes after which your system has been idle that auto shutdown is triggered. Uh, I'm going to set this to 45, but you can use any number you want as long as it's more than 20 minutes. Okay, so if I forget to switch off my server, it will be automatically switched off. So at this point, uh, we're mostly done. Uh, you may want to configure some Parsec host settings. So from Parsec, uh, I'm going to click on the cogwheel icon to get into the settings. Uh, that guy is here and we're not interested in client settings. We'll just go to host uh, and you'll want to change some settings here. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the name of the system to something I can recognize. Guru Gaming Rig. Uh, now on Windows, leave the use client resolution setting. Okay. Um, alternatively, you can set it to 1080p or the resolution you want to game at. On a Mac, I recommend you use the same resolution as your desktop to avoid problems. I'm also increasing the bandwidth limit to 50 megabit. Um, and you can set some, some stuff here. Now you'll notice I've set the FPS to 60. That's only for the recording purposes. Okay, um, unless you have a really good internet connection, uh, you may want to stick to 30 FPS. Okay, so next what we're going to do is install Steam. Now, for some, this, this is not required. You can install whatever other store you're using, but I'm a Steam kind of guy. Uh, so let's go ahead and download Steam here. And next, and English, yes, next, install, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And we'll run Steam. And after a few updates, you'll be asked to log in to Steam. And so we'll log in to our account here. And here we go. And Steam is now running. Brilliant. Okay, so yeah, I'll close this guy here. And we're ready to start installing uh, and playing games on our system. Right, if what you're interested in is just gaming on the cloud, we're done head over to this time code to see me actually gaming on the thing. If you're a bit more technical and want to set up some automation, there's more to do. 
we'll start by creating a lambda function in AWS. Uh, so this is basically a function written in some programming language, in this case Python. Uh, and when this function is run, it will automatically take a snapshot of the volume of our server, uh, create an image from the snapshot, and then delete the volume. So this is a good idea as storing a snapshot on your AWS account is cheaper than storing a volume. So this is going to save us money. Right, so we'll start by shutting down our instance. Just click shut down and click continue. Okay, session disconnected. And now we're going to go to services and we're going to go to Lambda in the Amazon console. Uh, now we're going to cre create a new function. So click create function. And we're going to give the function a name. Um, this can be anything. I'm going to call mine snap and delete. And we'll change the right runtime to Python 3.8. And we'll click create function. Right, so now we need to get the function code from my GitHub page. Again, the link is in the video description. Uh, now what I would do is click on raw, so we just get the code itself, select the whole thing, copy it, and then in the Lambda console, just double click on the file, lambdafunction.py, select the sample code and overwrite it with what you've copied from my GitHub. Okay, so now you need to make a few changes here. So first, in this part here, we'll need to put the name of our gaming rig, which in our case is Guru Gaming Rig. Here the region can get from the dropdown on the top right. So mine is EU Central 1, so I'll just replace that. Uh, and then you might also want to set the size of your volume, which in my case is 512, which matches what I've created. So the next step is to configure some settings uh, for how this function will run, such as the timeout. Okay, so we'll scroll down to the uh, basic settings section and go ahead and click edit and change the timeout from three seconds to 15 minutes. Uh, we'll need that time until the snapshot is created. And go ahead and click save. So now we're ready to deploy our function or save it really. Uh, so just click on this orange deploy button here. And the function has been deployed. Now we need to give this function permission to manage our EC2 instances. Uh, so from the top left side, click on permissions and click on the role name that AWS created for us. Now from the screen, we need to click attach policies and search for Amazon EC2 full access. Okay, so Amazon ideally spelled correctly. There we go, EC2 full access. Okay, click it and click attach policy. Okay, so now our function should have the required permissions. Now this is a good time to actually test that the function is working. So we'll go to EC2 here. And uh, if we look at our list of instances from here, uh, actually, wait, it's not running. I'll remove the filter. There you go. You can see that our instance is stopped since we shut it down. Uh, there's also the volume for the instance that is still there. Um, uh, and if we go to snapshot, there is absolutely nothing. So the first thing we'll want to do is terminate the instance. So from the instances page, select it, instance state, terminate, and confirm. So this will start terminating the instance. Okay, it will be shutting down. And then in a few seconds, there we go, it is terminated. So now that the instance has terminated, the volume is still there since we told it not to delete on termination. So we can now go to Lambda and run our function to see if it actually does anything. So we'll go to the function here. And before testing it, we need to create a testing scenario as it were. Okay, so what we'll do is from test here, we'll click configure test event and give the event some name. It doesn't really matter what you name it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to call it manual run. Okay, and click create. And now click the test button and let the function run for a few minutes. This could take a while, guys. I'm speeding it up here. So when the function is done, click on details. You see these three lines, created snapshot, deleted volume, created image. That means that the function did what it was meant to do. Fantastic. 
okay our function is done and it's working now at this point you'd need to run this function manually every time you shut down your gaming rig which is not ideal uh, luckily we can tell aws to automatically run the function for us when the server is shut down so let's do just that so to set up the event we'll go to the event bridge aws service uh, i'll just search for it here event there we go amazon event bridge and click create rule and give the rule a name uh, i'm gonna call it um, snap and delete on termination okay uh, we can add a description if we want to i'm just gonna add a simple description here I really need to learn to type. <laughs> okay, uh, now our pattern is an event pattern. Uh, we'll click predefined and choose AWS as our service provider and EC2 as the service name. The event type is EC2 instance state change notification and we'll change it to a specific state which is terminated. So this event will run when an EC2 instance is terminated. Uh, leave any instance tagged as our script will then target the right instance automatically. Now we select a target or what should happen when this event runs uh, and we'll just choose our snap and delete lambda function and optionally we can also tag this uh, I'm gonna give it a name of snap and delete event and we'll click create. Okay so now our event has been created nice so we shut down our server the event kicks in runs our function and automatically takes a snapshot so this is great um, and it will save you a lot of money in storage costs but the next time we want to start gaming we'll have to log into the aws console and manually create a new instance from that image that the script created for us so that's again that's a bit not ideal uh, we can make this more convenient by using a launch template uh, so this tells AWS how to create an instance and we can then use a script on our local computer to tell AWS to start an instance with that template. So when we want to game, we don't need to get into the console. Uh, we'll also configure the template to use spot instances, which is basically a way of bidding uh, for the computing power that you need. And this will reduce what we're charged for for the instance by over 50%. Okay, so we're going to go to EC2 and from there we're going to go to launch templates and we'll click create launch template. Uh, we'll give the template a name such as guru gaming rig underscore LT or as I typed here guru gaming rug. So apparently I'm gaming on a rug. Uh, we'll set the version to one. Uh, we won't include an AMI. Now for instance type, choose the same type of instance as before, in my case g4dn.xlarge. Uh, and we'll also need to choose the key pair we'll be using to log in. Okay, so from here I'll choose the Guru Gaming Rig key. Uh, networking settings, we don't need to change anything unless of course you have a different environment. And now we'll click add new volume under storage. Uh, we'll set the size of the volume, in my case 512. Um, and we'll also set the device name. Now, this isn't strictly speaking required, but I do it, so, you know, why not? Uh, so we'll say specify custom value and type slash dev slash SDA1 and save. Um, uh, we'll now choose the volume type, which is GP2. Uh, we'll set delete on termination to no and encrypted to no. Okay, so from down here, we're gonna add a tag. Now we need to add two tags, uh, one with the key name with a capital N and make sure you set the value to the name of your gaming rig. And we want this to be applied to the instance as well as its volume. So choose volumes from here, um, optionally network interfaces. Uh, so it's applied to both. We'll then want to add another tag. So click add tag, set the tag name to snap and delete. Okay, so don't set this to the name of your function. It needs to be called snap and delete, just in case you called it something else. And set the value to true with a capital T. And again, for resource types, we'll choose volumes. 
Okay, uh, next we can scroll down to the Advanced Details tab. And in here we'll say Request Spot Instances, which will save us some money. So we'll click Customize. And we're going to click Set Your Maximum Price. Now you need to enter a price that's not too high, but also not too low. So what we can do is we can look up the average instance prices um, in our region. So I'm going to go here, EC2 Spot Instances Pricing. And we'll choose our region, which in my case is Frankfurt. And the column on the right will show us the average price for a Windows instance. Now for a G4DNX large, that's on average 38 cents per hour. So if we enter a bid that's higher than that, like 40 cents, we'll get an instance most of the time. So I'm going to say 40 cents for my bid. Uh, next, we'll set the shutdown behavior to terminate. And we will disable termination protection and also disable detailed CloudWatch monitoring. We don't need that. And uh, yeah, that's it. We'll click Create Launch Template. And our launch template has now been created. And as you can see, it also gets a launch template ID. Okay, we're in the home stretch. All that's left to do is to download the script on our system and tell it which launch template to use to run an instance. Uh, so when we want to start gaming, we just run the script, open Parsec, and wait for our system to appear. Start by going to my GitHub page where we can find the script. Now you'll need the SH script for Linux and Mac or the PS1 script for Windows. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to copy the SH script here. And I'm going to paste it in a text editor. OK, new document, make it plain text. And we'll paste it here. And we need to change uh, two things. So for gaming instance name, we'll put the name of our gaming rig. And for launch template, we'll need to get that launch template ID from the previous step. Uh, you can actually go, uh, where is it? Here it is, to your launch template, and then click this copy icon here to quickly get the ID. And just paste it in for the launch template variable. Now we'll save this script. Um, again, I'm going to place it in my gaming rig folder. You can call it whatever you want. I'm calling it start script. Dot sh. Okay, and save. On Linux and Mac, you'll also need to make the script executable. So open a terminal, go to the folder where you have your... Oh, hold on a sec. <laughs> oh, my sh has updated. There we go. So go to the folder that uh, contains your gaming rig files. As you can see, there's my start script. And we'll type chmod plus x and the name of that file. And now, as you can see, it's changed color to show that it is executable. So now all that's left is to actually run the script. The script requires the AWS command line utilities to work. So if you don't have them already, uh, visit the link in the video description to download the utilities for Mac, Windows or Linux, depending on what you're running. Once you've done that, uh, type AWS configure to configure the utilities. So we'll need our access key ID. That's the same ID we downloaded earlier. So I'm just gonna copy my access key ID and paste it. Okay. Now we'll need to do the same for the secret key. Okay, so again, I'll go copy my secret key and paste it. We can also choose our default region, which you should set to the region where your rig is, and output format can be JSON. So now we can actually run the script, and this should use that launch template to create a new instance for us. As you can see, launching new instance. Uh, once the instance description comes up, you can type Q to exit. And if I go to instances in my AWS console, you can see that a new instance has been uh, initialized and well, it's initializing right now. And in a few seconds, the instance should appear in Parsec. And there it is, there's my instance. I'll connect to it. Ah, 
And there we are. Connected to our instance, we sometimes need to re-log in to Steam. This doesn't always happen, but you know, just log in again. Okay, we're all set. Let's test it and play some games. Okay, let's get a game installed here. Uh, I'm gonna use Doom Eternal. Uh, now, since I have another Steam machine running, I'm just gonna switch this to this machine. I'll click install and I'll uh, go through the download and setup process. Okay, let's now run this game. Again, first time setup. Uh, Okay, and we're running the game. Now again, guys, I'm recording uh, at the same time as doing this. Um, so you might get some choppy audio here or video. Uh, in reality, it looks much better than what you're seeing here. Anyway, uh, let's play. So I'm gonna go to the campaign. Actually, first, let's configure the resolution. So I'm gonna click uh, the settings icon here and set my resolution to 1080p, which it's not right now. So uh, let's set it to 1920 by 1080. All right. And uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, these settings are all on Ultra Nightmare, guys, here. Okay, I'm just gonna choose a random level. Uh, let's see here. Yep, okay, Doom Hunter base. And here we are, lovely. Okay, so again, guys, um, if the if the video is choppy or, or the sound is choppy, this, I wasn't experiencing this whilst actually playing the game. Uh, it's just my screen recorder being a bit wonky. In reality, it was much more fluid than this is. But as you can see, here we are, playing Doom Eternal from another country. Um, uh, so yeah, oh, this, this game is so addicting, I actually, felt like actually playing now. Uh, but anyway, um, you can see it's running fine. Okay, all my inputs are being processed. Um, I still had motion blur turned on here, which I hate. Uh, so <laughs> I'd normally switch that off. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's working just fine. There you go, you demon. Okay, anyway, that's enough Doom. Uh, so let's go ahead and exit this guy. And yeah, once we're done gaming, all we need to do is shut down our machine. There we go. Shut down. Continue. Okay, and that makes sure our instance doesn't keep running in the background, uh, because that would incur charges, of course. And then we can disconnect. And you're done. You now have a cloud gaming server, which you have complete control over, uh, and it's easy and convenient to launch an instance whenever you want. Now, since this is the first time the automation will be run, uh, it may be a good idea to monitor it to see that everything is working fine. So let's do that. So we've just shut down our rig. Uh, as you can see, it says shutting down. And after a few seconds, that should update to say terminated. And yep, there we are. And so now if we go to the snapshots, you'll see a snapshot is currently being created. Uh, so our script is doing that for us. Okay. Um, now the snapshot will take a while to create, but eventually, as you can see, it's been created with the tags and everything. If we go to the volumes, the volume has been deleted. And if we go to AMIs, the machine image has been created for our next gaming session. That's it. With a little technical skill, Parsec and AWS, we have our own cloud gaming server, which can run any game we want, or indeed any other software you want. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you find it useful, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, this is a brand new channel, so your likes and subscribes mean a lot to me. Anyway, happy gaming, and thanks for watching.